So for our next course, for our second course, this is again where we start to look at flavors. We start to understand not only the beer and, and what beer does is it quenches their thirst, but it also can do a lot of other things. Um, you know, how it opens up the palate. Uh, the Saison style is one of my favorite styles uh, for pairing uh, many different things because it is so flexible. And uh, this beer from Goose Island I thought was a really, really fun beer to kind of understand a little bit deeper um, because there's a lot of history to the style, but it's also uh, a beer that we stream with great cuisine. It, it, it streams fine dining because it's very complex in a very subtle way. And actually, we're lucky enough to actually have Greg Hall from Goose Island here. So, great. Tell us a little bit about this wonderful beer in front of everybody. Sure. Um, everybody should have some Sophie in front of you. And, and compared to the um, the Victory beer, which was, was brilliant, we call that brilliant, and then you can see see right through it. This is this is very hazy. We've got some some stuff in there, and um, it's a little bit of yeast, but it's mostly protein. So don't be afraid of that. Protein's good for you. We all know that. <laughs> so. Um, uh, Sophie is, is um, as Sean said, it's a Saison style, or kind of a French-Belgian farmhouse style beer. And if you go back a couple hundred years ago, when there were literally thousands of farms, and they're all family farms, a lot of these farms would make beer. And they would make beer, not just for themselves, but for their, their guest workers that would help them with the harvest. So they needed to have beers that were strong enough to last from when they, they brewed them in the winter, until the, the, the harvest season, but also refreshing to, to serve those uh, thirsty workers. So um, what we decided to do is we, we made a beer in that style. We're, we come in about 6.5% clean burning ethanol. It's not quite as, as big as the Victory, but, but a little bit of punch to it. Um, we use two malts in it. We use pale malt, a little bit of wheat malt. Um, so we don't pick up a ton of color, and, and that's kind of by design. And then we, we hop it with a couple different hops. Um, the, the aroma hop is a great American hop called Amarillo that we like very much. And when we were designing this beer, we, we did about five different recipes and tried them all. We liked two, two very much. One that had the Amarillos in it and another one that we barrel aged. That we actually took the beer, put it in a barrel with some orange zest and we loved that. So we couldn't decide which one we liked the best. We almost thought about making two, but then one of our brewers said, hey, why don't we blend them together and see how that turned out, and, and that's what this is. So we, we dry hop with some Amarillo, and then we take 20% of the beer and put it in a barrel, a wine barrel, with um, some orange zest, and then also some, some uh, wild yeast, some, some Britannomyces. And Brett's the type of yeast that a couple hundred years ago, 150 years ago, um, when every beer was, was aged and transported in a barrel, um, as was every wine, um, Brett likes to live in barrels. It likes, it likes wet wood. So probably every beer and every wine had Brett in there. And that Brett gives the, the beer a little bit of a spicy, funky, barnyardy character. Um, then this, this French guy, this jerk named Louis Pasteur came along <laughs> and cleaned everything up. You know? Yes, you know, sure, sure he saved tens of millions of lives, but for those of us who appreciate the finer things, you know, cheese and beer just weren't as tasty for a while. But thankfully there are a lot of brewers that are putting the fun stuff back in beer now. And uh, we, we put some of that bread in, it's in the barrel for about uh, three to four months with the orange zest, and then we blend it back in to the base beer, and, and this is what we get. Um, because the tradition of, of the Saisons are very much about, about the family. And one of my favorite, um, absolute favorite breweries in the world is a Saison producer in Belgium, Brasserie Dupont. And they, they're run by a family. It's two brothers run it, and their sister makes cheese, and her husband makes bread. It's the total family thing. So we decided to honor that tradition. And at Goose Island, we're a family business as well. My father founded Goose Island. I kind of run the beer side. And the next generation is uh, my daughter, and her name's Sophie. So we decided to uh, give her a beer for her 10th birthday. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. So, no, we think it goes really well, with, uh, especially with lighter stuff. It's great with sushi, great with 
with anything, and it would have been great with that oyster as well. Um, but it goes up nicely to fish. Actually, works pretty well at the end of the meal too. The the yeah, it's a, it's a great beer with goat cheese, um, but it can't handle too much. So I think it'll be really nice for the monkfish. Hope you all enjoy it. Cheers. So it's really great to have brewers like Greg here, as well as Bill and a few other people that are here tonight. And this is what's fun is because to give you guys a little bit more insight about the style of the beer, you know, there's tons of different styles. And that's kind of why the, what's sitting in most, in front of most people is uh, the monkfish. And monkfish is otherwise known as the poor man's lobster. Um, it has a very similar texture, uh, picks up a lot of flavor. Um, and this particular uh, dish, we really wanted to showcase uh, the beer, you know, with its nice herbally citrusy notes, uh, the monkfish, and we wrapped it with mustard greens. And those mustard greens have a little bit of a peppery, a little bit of a bite to it, which when you kind of taste the beer, you kind of get that little tiny bitterness in the back, uh, but not too aggressive. And then to kind of tone it back down, we have some squash and some eggplant with some a uh, uh, little bit of, uh, it's a black olive oil, so basically, it's uh, black olives that have been sprayed with a little bit of olive oil, and we actually candied some olives. So you start to think, start thinking about candied olives and that astringency and some of those different flavors. And then to play it up even a little bit more, we took some uh, lily bulbs and actually uh, sliced them very, very thin and deep fried those. And then we have some arugula, which has a little bit of peppery notes again. And a lot of these different flavors you kind of find in the beer. And then just to really bring it full circle, I was actually able to get some work from Captain Lawrence this morning. And they were making a triple. And so this is a first work. So it's a very sweet um, first running from the, the brew house. So basically there's no hops. It hasn't been fully diluted because of all the uh, sparging process. And we took that and we basically caramelized it down and we added in some malt vinegar and a little bit of tangerine kind of syrup from a candied or confit uh, tangerine peel. And that citrusy note and that orange note, I really wanted to play up with just a little bit of a twist by not, instead of doing orange, but with the tangerine. And so this is kind of where, if you kind of taste a little bit of a, a syrup, if you will, that is the gastric, you kind of get a little bit of a sweet sour. And then with the beer, it's really going to open up, I think, both together. Um, again, this is where we're actually able to dissect the beer and almost deconstruct it and then reconstruct it with flavors in the dish. And you all are all kind of allowed to kind of taste different elements, you know, a little bit of caper berry and a little bit of salt and this and that. So each bite, you know, kind of mix it up a little bit because and then taste the beer and you really get, I think, a nice nuance to the whole process of what I call cooking. So, <laughs> so enjoy it.